When it comes to moving products around the world, COVID has nothing on natural disasters. From hurricanes to wildfires, when nature strikes, commerce stops, and climate change is making that happen more often. It's why companies here at COP are working on how to protect themselves and their consumers. Some are more prepared than others. Unilever, which makes over 400 products globally, has a long history of dealing with global political disruptions, which its CEO says positions it well for climate-related supply chain disruptions. Every major business was tested by COVID, are we, where planning became less important than speed of response. And I think the same is going to be true on the challenges to our supply chain that come from climate change. Resilience, adaptability. For companies large and small, adapting to a new climate and becoming more resilient, on top of the larger goal of getting greener, will cost them. Pepsi pledges to be net zero by 2040, but its CEO says rather than a green premium, it will lean to green profit. I think this is a major growth opportunity for PepsiCo. If I, if I can get my consumers to prefer my brands because I am um, somehow more environmentally friendly and I can convince them that that's the way they want to live their lives and make their choices, I am, I'm going to be very successful. Former President Obama, who drew massive crowds here today, said the same. Today, more than one-fifth of the world's largest companies have set net zero emissions targets. Not just because it's the right thing to do for the environment, but in many cases because it makes sense for their bottom line. And make no mistake, resilience is big business. Whether it's new materials to withstand higher winds or make homes and buildings less flammable, or new technology that can adapt a product supply chain in a matter of moments, there is money to be made, Shep.